Have you ever just built a patio spool cable pool bench? Cable spool pallet bench. I realized when it was done, it was so nice. You just wanted to sit back on it, relax, kick your feet up, and realize that you can't because you haven't built your ottoman yet. The good news is that we do have extra pieces from that giant industrial cable spool that we acquired. I'm Daniel. And I'm Jay-Z. This is just my DIY. Today we're going to show you how we took the core from the industrial cable spool and turned it into an ottoman. We might have made a couple of mistakes along the way, but I think it turned out just fine. I think it turned out just fine. Plus. Fine plus. Yes, for we have installed a secret storage compartment, which we are revealing, so it's no longer a secret. Not secret. It has storage. <laughs> now we're going to show you how we made this cable spool ottoman to go with our cable spool pallet bench right now. So I create my infamous circle J using a center point and a distance equal to the radius of your circle. You can go ahead and place it and use it to draw a circle. We're actually making four circles. Three of them are out of this three quarters ply and the last one will be out of eighth ply. Really thin plywood. So after he uses the jigsaw to cut the basic circle shape out, he uses a power sander to sand it to shape. Correct. And of course, one of the circles isn't much of a circle, it's more of a ring. When making your ring, it probably is easier to cut out the center first before you try and cut the ring out itself. Use clamps to stabilize your wood. This ring is going to be the inner lip at the top of our ottoman, which is important in the overall design. And here's our thin circle, uh, only doing one quarter of it at a time since it is so thin, you know, be careful. And that's going to be the bottom of the cushion. We finish off with a little bit of hand sanding to get all the edges nice and smooth. Now it's time to add on the side panels. You'll see that we're putting the wood ring on top of one of our wood circles. That's to ensure that the ring is at the right height inside the ottoman. This is gonna be the lip for the lid. We use a spare scrap of plywood as a guide for where we need to be inserting the nails with the nail gun. So we just add one panel at a time and tack them in with about three to four nails. Depending on the stage and quality of the wood. Yeah. <laughs> We reinforce it with wood glue. Mm -hmm. Just putting it in that little crevice right there. We reinforce with more wood glue later on, but you'll find that later on. <laughs> She's so funny. Aww. <laughs> So once we get down to the last piece, the original design did have a smaller piece, but turns out it needed to be a little bit smaller for us. So we just took a quick measurement, went over to the miter saw and trimmed it on down. But at this point, we realized that we missed a really big step in the beginning. You know one thing we didn't think about? Is this the right height? <laughs> it's too late now. <laughs> this may be like a table. <laughs> so, we devised a plan to make it shorter. We cut sections to place on the inside so that we could set our height put our circle on top of it at the height that we wanted our ottoman. We used some tape to bind it all together for the tacking nailing process, including the marking of the height so that we could aim as correctly as possible. Mm -hmm. And then we took the nail gun and tacked everything into place. 
Now we are setting up a second measurement so that we may run a jigsaw to correct our aforementioned mistake. Yep, we messed up the footage where we cut the rest of the panels, but really glad we had this close-up shot to show you on the last two. We're essentially just running the jigsaw right along the bottom and going panel by panel. With a lot of caution and safety because this is... It's a little dangerous. Precarious. Precarious. Once everything's to the right height, we go ahead and tack in that last little piece, which has already been cut on the miter saw, as they should have been in the first place. Nail it in place. Set it upright, or down. <laughs> Upside down. <laughs> And sand till a fine smoothness. Yes. For like an hour. And now what we're doing is pre-drilling the holes for the feet. We probably do this a little bit out of order, but I like to put down the spar urethane to protect the bottom first and then go ahead and screw the feet in while that's curing. That enables me to save time by flipping the unit over and getting the rest of my staining done while the bottom is still drying. Guarantee is a much more protected unit. <laughs> so I'm adding just one layer of stain here on the outside. We really wanted to keep the character of the original wood, but just tone it a little bit to match the cable spool pallet bench. staining inside the upper ring just at the top. And then once that's dry, it's time for a full coat of spar urethane on the outside. Spar urethane is great for outdoor wood projects. So I'm wiping that on the same way you wipe on your stain and then letting it dry overnight. For the top, we're using an old patio pillow that we're pulling the stuffing out of. Truthfully, I was thinking it was going to be foam in there, but... It turned out to be Kermit's vomit after a bender. <laughs> it was some kind of polyfill. So I took out the tuft and then cut open the back of the pillow. And then we wanted to keep the tuft as a feature, so we... We decided to make the center of the circle known as we would drill a hole through it so that we could tuft through the hole. Yep. Just a quick drill and then put the piece of wood inside the cover and it was time to stuff. The pillow did have a zipper which was actually what I was using to stuff through. We wanted to keep the zipper just in case we needed to add, replace whatever filling in the future. Once there was enough stuffing, went ahead and started stapling. I took the first round of stapling, just getting the basic shape, but Daniel's a little better with tension than I am, and tension's important, right? Absolutely. Even really applied tension ensures that your pillow will have a proper form and look to its molding. So I pull out half of the staples, retension it, and then restaple it. <laughs> Teamwork. I call this teamwork. <laughs> Once we had that in place, it was time to pull some needle and thread through that hole to get our tuft into place. We press the button in to make sure we have like the appropriate tuftiness. Yep. And then we just tacked it on the back with some staples and tied a knot around those. Double check our staples to make sure that it was evenly stapled all the way around. We would hate to see one of those come loose. Yes. Now it's time to add the inside lip to the top. Jay-Z applies the glue liberally 
as we want to make sure and get the glue to adhere with the cloth and to the wood and to the other wood, and such and such. So we clamp the living daylights out of it and place Bobo to work. Sit, Bobo, sit. Good boy. Next day, we released Bobo from his job and realized it didn't quite fit because I had done such an amazing job fitting the circles that it was too tight. So we had to reshape it with a little bit of a sanding from the red, from the what? What is that? From the oscillating multi-tool. I thought you called it the bzzz It's the oscillating multi-tool. <laughs> Once we cleaned all the sand up out of it, we could finally glue it. There we go. A cable spool ottoman with storage. We hope you like this video and that you can now build your very own cable spool ottoman with storage. And if you did, then you should click on that button that says you did. It's called the like button and the subscribe button and the ring the bell button. There will be more videos. You should wait for them and check out our list of materials down below. And if you're not watching this on our website, head over to JustMyDIY.com for more. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>